Well, hello. Um, I am trying to figure out where I'm at. I saw the countdown in the announcements, but there was nowhere to go live. So I am trying to figure this out. Um, okay, looks like I'm live. So we're just gonna go from here. Um, I have no idea who's online. So, hello, welcome. If you can let me know in the comments and um, let me find you. <laughs> let me find the live so I can see who's here. Um, I had to wait for the very last second. I hate doing that. So, let me see. I can find the post. There we are. Okay, I've got the post, I think. Oh, I don't. All right. Okay. Tell me. Can anyone hear me? Can you hear me? <laughs> I hate this. I hate when this happens. I'd love to just go and do. Okay. Okay. There's somebody coming. Let me see. Okay, y'all can hear me. All right, good. Thank you. And you see me. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you so much. Okay, let's start this then. <laughs> um, let me put this over here so I can see the comments. Okay, so welcome. And I am so glad that you are here. Um, I see Marilyn here. Thank you for joining me. So, um, if you are watching this, if you come on, let me know who's here. And then um, if you wind up being in the replay, let me know that you're on hashtag team replay. That's always fun to, to get to see who comes on later. All right. So one thing I want, want to know before we get started, did... Um, did you see the Nonprofit Founders Club meeting notes that were sent out on Tuesday? If you're on that mailing list, you got a, an email, and it's something that I'm, I'm doing for founders, and um, I'll be giving resources in the meeting notes on specific themes each month. It was Board of Directors this month. And so um, it, you get, get a little bit of, of a story from me or some experience from me, a tip, and then there's some resources that I give you to help you with whatever theme is. And like I said, uh, June's theme is uh, Board of Directors. So I'm going to put the link in the um, comments if you decide you would like to sign up for the meeting notes because you did not get them. Um, you can do that there. Okay. Now, let's get into what we're talking about today, which is Board of Directors. There are three things that I want to talk about today. First, um, brainstorm some ways to invite people to the board. The second thing is talking about uh, board responsibilities. And then, of course, it's my jam. We're going to talk about fundraising and the board. So, um, let's see. Let's start off with how do you um, invite people to your board? Let me know in the comments how you, you do it. Um, one, 
one reason why is we can all learn from each other. But um, I'll tell you what I do or what I like whenever I'm being recruited um, to help give you some ideas. So I like a personal meeting. Um, I know this past year and a half, it's been really difficult to do personal meetings because um, of COVID. So it might have to be a Zoom meeting, but um, I, I just like that interaction. I like to be able to ask questions. Um, and there's just absolutely nothing like sitting with a founder and listening to their story and their passion and it's contagious. So that, that personal meeting is so important. The next thing I like to hear is I like um, the mission, vision, and passion shared. So why did you start this nonprofit? Or if you're a board member, why did you join the board? I, I like to know what attracted you because it might be the same thing that attracts me. And then the last thing is, I want, I want the role defined. I want to know what I'm getting myself into. I want to know the time requirements, and I want to know what the monetary expectations are. Um, these are all part of the recruitment process for me, and it's just something that, that I like to know before I even say yes. So, um, those are, are some of my strategies, things that I like to do. Um, as far as where to recruit from, you start with people close to you. Uh, you can also go and check out different nonprofits that have a similar mission to you. See who's been on their board. Um, it's usually on websites, it's public information. You can also get it off the 990 and, you know, check those people out and see if um, they might be a good fit. Uh, business owners can also be uh, a, a source for you. So those are just some ideas. Um, let me um, check over here. Okay, we're still good, Marilyn. That's awesome. Okay, so uh, the next thing is what are your board's responsibilities? Now, this came about because I saw, uh, I've seen a lot of questions in Facebook groups over board's responsibilities. Um, and I actually saw someone post on Facebook this quote, and I absolutely loved it. It says, passion should be a given like water being wet but the power of the board is in their individual and collective hands to make great things happen with goals and tools and strategies. Passion is kindling, strategy is fire. I love the language in that, and it really talks about how your board should have passion, but that passion without any kind of strategy is really nothing. You have to have both the passion and the strategy to really make it worthwhile. So what are the responsibilities? Well, as a board, you your mission, your purpose is to steer the ship. Um, it's a governing board, so you get to decide which way your nonprofit's going and what it's going to do. And so how do you steer the ship? Well, there's two things that will do it every single time. The first thing is your strategic plan. Yes, um, that strategic plan is so important. It helps everyone get on the same page and shows you how to, um, in what direction you're going, you're steering the ship. The next thing is goals. You need to set goals. Goals will give you direction 
and help you get to where you're going. So the second thing that's the board's responsibility is to provide a roadmap. There are three roadmaps that boards rely on heavily. The strategic plan. You can't get away from the strategic plan. The second thing is the fundraising plan. The fundraising plan helps you lay out for an entire year how you're going to raise the money that you need to sustain your mission. So, and fundraising plans also help you get off that event hamster wheel. It's no longer the fundraiser of the month. You can plan out your different strategies over an entire year in a fundraising plan and be able to manage what you're doing and do it well because you know what's coming. The third roadmap is your program. Um, this is how you're going to fulfill your mission. That's what your program does. It is your vehicle in, um, in implementing your mission. So that's another roadmap. Next, your responsibility is to be the leader. You have to take on the leadership responsibilities. So what does that mean? It means you lead with your experience and your expertise. Don't um, keep that stuff to yourself. You need to be able to um, use your experience and expertise in the nonprofit that you sign up for. And the next thing is lead with your wallet. If you aren't able to contribute, if your board members aren't willing to contribute, then how can you ask anyone else to follow suit? I have heard of some board members that will say they're on the board but they'll say, I would never give to this organization. Let me tell you, if you ever hear that, that board member no longer needs to be on your board because if they can't buy into your mission with their wallet, they really aren't loyal to you. So um, the next thing, there are some legal and fiduciary responsibilities that, um, board members have. All right, so first, there are some tax liabilities. You are responsible, the board as a whole is responsible for reporting your local, state, and federal taxes. Um, you have to fill out the forms. I know you're tax exempt, but you still have to fill out those forms. And then here is something else. Um, that doesn't apply to you right now, but I wanted to make this point to drive home um, the fact that individual members, when they join a board, they are liable for certain things. There is a huge responsibility. So, um, so, here is something from the IRS. If the IRS takes a look at your organization and finds that the pay for the nonprofit team is excessive. So if your um, top five people in your um, organization, if the IRS says that pay is excessive, then individual board members can be held liable for taxes on that money. There's even a tax law that has a provision that hits charities with an excise tax of 20% on compensation above $1 million for a nonprofit's top five highest paid employees. And that all comes back to the board and the individual responsibilities. So when you're asking someone to be on a board, 
I, I want you to understand that this is a huge responsibility that you're asking them for. And I know a lot of people don't understand that when they join a board, but I need you to understand it as the founder. All right, so now we get into some things um, that are legal responsibilities for board members and board as a whole. So first of all, we have duty of care. So board members have a legal responsibility to serve the organization in a similar manner than any other reasonable person of legal age would behave and they have to do it in a way that is not reckless. That is the definition of duty of care. All right, let me put this into an example for you. So a misuse of funds. So voting, the board voting themselves a bonus after a profitable fundraising campaign. That is a misuse of funds and it violates the duty of care because this would be something that a reasonable person of legal age would not do and it would be considered reckless. All right, let me make sure we don't have any comments going on. Okay, we're good. Okay, now we're gonna get to another legal responsibility, duty of loyalty. So this means each member separately and as a group has a responsibility of loyalty to the nonprofit. So the way that a board member demonstrates his or her commitment is by not personally gaining from the access or information they obtain from the organization. Think about that. Their first loyalty is to your um, nonprofit. So they have to have um, a commitment um, to your nonprofit and they cannot use any access to anything, any resource or information that they may get from your nonprofit in anything that would, uh, they could personally gain from. It is a legal responsibility. The third legal responsibility of a board member is duty of obedience. So all board members have a responsibility to remain faithful and obedient to the organization's mission, vision, and goals. So nonprofits are tax exempt and boards are entrusted by society to ensure the financial integrity of the nonprofit. That's really what it comes down to. Um, they have to remain obedient and faithful to the mission, vision, and goals. And they are also uh, financially, uh, well, they, they have a physical responsibility, is how it's worded, um, to the nonprofit. So they have to make sure that the nonprofit stays uh, financially sound. All right, so what are some things that you can do to protect your nonprofit? All right, so first of all, um, having an annual board training and onboarding. Um, I know a lot of you are probably still trying to get your, your board members, but for those of you that have some, this is something good for you to think about. Um, just once a year when you get new board members on, have a board training and make sure when um, new members come on, onboard them. Have certain things that they must look at or read or do uh, as part of the acclimation to your nonprofit. I have sat on quite a few boards and I very, very rarely get that onboarding or board training and it shows, it really does. Okay, so what are some things that you might uh, want to think about in your onboarding or your training, let them have access to your bylaws. That is the one document that is going to govern everything you do. If you have a question, you go back to your bylaws and see if it's in there. Um, 
The next thing that they may need is your strategic plan and your goals. They can't steer the ship if they don't know where they're going. And then of course your mission and your vision. Um, these are, are very important pieces. These are the roots of your organization. And so they need to know what those roots are. Um, a fundraising plan. They need to know how we're gonna raise all this money. Uh, job descriptions, especially for the officers, that's always really important. Give them some expectations. What um, do you expect them to do during their term? That's always good information. And then, of course, you have a code of conduct and a code of ethics that they need to sign. The next thing um, that you need to think about is insurance. I know in Georgia, where I am, um, are required to have um, workman's compensation insurance, um, even if it's only a volunteer board. You have more than, I think, five people, three or five, I can't remember. But if you have a certain number of people, you have to have it. So check with your state to see what kind of insurance you, you need to have. Um, to keep you legal, because that's one of the things we really want to do, right? Okay, and then anytime you have a question, talk to an attorney or and or a CPA. Um, they can be some of uh, you know your best resources on this stuff. All right, let let me check. I keep looking over here. So let me see if we got we have any comments. Um, I think we're good. Okay. Let me see. Nope. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I went through Facebook today. So, anyway, <laughs> let's get back to what we're doing. How does a fundraising and the board connect? Well, it's very simple. Fundraising begins with the board and any fundraising committee that you may have. So board members, they lead by giving. They lead by example. Um, there's a fundraising plan that they have agreed to. And, you know, they sometimes they, they help you think outside the box on fundraising. They help you execute plans too. The one thing I want you though to not do, because I see it so often, is think like a, a civic organization. I think um, a lot of times the board thinks too small when it comes to fundraising. They want all these little bitty fundraisers that might do 250 or 500 dollars maybe when there are more proven things that you can do um, to raise you know a few thousand dollars so don't think small think a little bit larger and your board can help with that if if they're not um, thinking that way themselves but you know the board ha has to lead by example. It all starts from the top and works its way down. And like I said, if your board member can't give or bring people in to give, then um, how can they ask anyone else to do it? All right, so we have um, some resources, the Nonprofit Founders University actually has a board training in there with some worksheets. So once you have your board, uh, you can go through and it, it walks through um, the, the legal and fiduciary responsibilities that boards have. So it really gives your board a good idea of what they've signed up for. So you can use that resource as a, an annual training and like I said, it has some worksheets for the board to do. And it's geared towards a working board. So, um, 
they actually come up with what action items they are going to commit to. Um, it's a good training. The next thing is um, earlier in the recruiting, we talked about um, setting those expectations and talking about um, all the different expectations and, and uh, what uh, job descriptions and all of that. Well, there is a potential board member decision package that I have, and I'm going to put um, that link in the, the comments too after we're done. Um, that you can down, you can uh, yeah, go to the link and download, and it is a template. So it it has everything that you need to think about, and so all you have to do is just write it all down and get it into that one document, and then you've got something that you can hand to the person, you can email in advance, or you can, when you have your one-on-one -on -one meeting, you can sit down and go through the um, packet or package together. And it really helps um, solidify. And if, if someone sees that package and they say, no, I don't think so, then consider that a, a good thing because that just means that they aren't ready for your organization. And you had rather know right then than wait for them to get on the board and two months into it go, this is not what I signed up for, I'm leaving. And you've got to start everything over again. All right, let me check one last time um, for comments. Um, make sure we don't have anything going on because we are just about done. And so I want to make sure that I, I answer everyone who's here if there's anything that you need to know. All right, if you have any questions about anything that we covered, um, then you can message me um, or email me. And I'll put my email address in the comments. And then, um, Let's see, there's also uh, the website, www.nonprofitfounders.club that you can go to for some more resources. And um, there's also a Founders Dreams Facebook page if you'd like to go to it. I just had a, a notice pop up, somebody commented. Okay, thank you, Marilyn, good information. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so upcoming next month, we're doing another Facebook Live, and we're going to talk about three individual fundraising strategies that you can do right now. And those, I'll go ahead and give you a hint. Those three strategies are the start from within, which is what I tell everyone to start with. Um, so you start from uh, within the organization and you move out. So you start with people closest to you and we'll talk more about that. Then we're gonna talk about a $5 Friday um, Facebook uh, fundraiser. They're doing really well for nonprofits right now. So we're gonna walk through how to do one of them. And then um, the third thing is an appeal letter. Those are always good. And there is a very specific appeal letter that you can do as a new nonprofit and we'll walk through that too. So I'll see you next month and I hope you have a great week. And if there's any questions, let me know. I'll talk to you later. Bye.